solar PPA or solar lease, you can still sell your home, but it, it, it can be there can be some difficulties that, are, that arise with the transfer of ownership. But anyway, the solar loan, it's no money down, you know. So we've sent something to your house. You've agreed to terms with us. We've sent a surveyor there. We've done your permitting, your interconnection application, engineering. We've installed all the panels. We've sat for a final inspection. We've got approval from the township and the utility, and you still have not paid a dollar. It's really cool. What's the interest rate? The interest rates vary from about 3.9% to, I think, 6.9%, depending on what term you pick. So what are the terms and that match with those interest rates? Oh, off the top of my head, I, I couldn't tell you exactly. There's a bunch of different programs that we choose from. We'd have to you know, run credit and, and break it down. But on average, it's pretty competitive where, to where Prime is now, right? What's Prime right now, like 4%, 4.5%? 5.5. Oh, it's 5.5. I guess I, I'm lucky I bought my house when I did. But it's a... Uh, it, it's, uh, the lower so, the loan, the lower the rate. It, yep. No, the, sh no, the, shorter, yeah, the, the, the shorter the loan, the lower the rate. The shorter the loan, the roll it low. Yeah, the short loans, I think, with like five years, it can be um, lower than 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 prime even. But after that, it it it, it varies. But um, so you go solar for, for for no money down. You get the tax credit and the SREX, which is great. You don't you you didn't pay a dollar for it, but you get those incentives. Now with the tax credit, I've seen people that have taken it for themselves. I met this guy in, in Beverly, New Jersey, that took that I think got a uh, $10,000 tax credit. He took 5,000 of it to pay off his credit cards and then put the other 5,000 to the loan and that was totally cool, he, he, he could do that. Um, so you do pay monthly, again, five, 10, 15 years, 20 years, whatever term that you pick out, um, but you are cash flow positive because of the SREX, the energy savings and the tax credit, which is really phenomenal. So, you know, I said before, the average homeowner is gonna make about $2,000 a year from the energy credits. The average homeowner, I would say, is gonna save minimum about $1,000 a year with our program. So, no, you're not gonna become filthy rich by putting solar panels on your home, but you'll, you'll save a few bucks by doing it, you know? Sometimes at least $100 a month or more. Um, the next one is the solar PPA that we offer, which is called a power purchase agreement. This one we recommend for a lot of people that maybe um, are retired or don't have a lot of income that they can take advantage of the tax credit with. So whether you go solar with Green Power Energy or any other company, what's important is that if you're shown a lease or a PPA, to make sure that that rate is locked in. So when I talk about not being able to sell your house easily, it's not necessarily because somebody goes and says, oh, I don't like that. It's because they don't like the terms of the agreement that you have. So when we sell solar leases, we make sure that you're locked in at your rate. Solar PPA, solar power purchase agreement. Instead of buying solar from the grid, you're buying it from the panels on your roof. And let's say that that PSE&G rate all in is 17 cents, you might be able to get locked in at 12 cents. So maybe you're saving 25% off your bill. It'll be a 20 year term. That's kind of how it works. That's definitely a less popular option where we definitely reserve that for more for people that, that can't take advantage of all those tax situations. The solar loan is by far our most popular option. I would say that out of every 100 people that go solar with our company, probably uh, you know maybe 70 of them, 75 of them have done the loan. Maybe another you know 20 have, have purchased outright, and then maybe another five did the PPA. It really um, leans that heavily. Um, and then of course the cash purchase, the outright cash purchase, which tons of people do. Um, you know, if you're concerned with interest rates and fees, a lot of people will self-finance. You know, if you have a relationship with a personal lender, you could always do that. You're going to avoid all that. And if you really do shop it out, you know, perhaps you could you could do a little bit better. But the solar loan packages, they make it so easy. Um, it, it, it's really nice. And the ability to, you know, to do what you want with that tax credit is nice also. Uh, but those are really the three options. Solar loan, solar PPA, very similar to a solar lease, basically the same thing and a, a cash purchase. Is there any questions about that? Right. So why go solar now? Um, it's affordable, it's low risk, it's secure. It, it's, uh, the sun keeps coming up every morning. You know, Even if that SREC market that I talked about is worth 10% of its, of its current value, you're still gonna do okay with solar panels on your roof. Um, and then also what's overlooked is it's something that's great for the environment and no one ever talks about that anymore. You know, my background was 
environmental planning. You know, I wanted to uh, design sustainable cities for the future and, and just do all that really great stuff. And solar really is that great. With solar and wind power, New Jersey really will be 50% renewable by 2030. I and mean, that's absolutely amazing. To anybody that flies into Newark Airport and just looks at that just sea of lights that looks like a cancer with all that pollution and the oil containers and Bayonne. And it's just a, it's a joke that people think of when they say it's the garden state. But in, in fact, New Jersey is one of the greenest places in the country. And that's really phenomenal. So you have the ability to contribute to that, which, which is fantastic. And then also there's financing programs available to you that, that minimize that out-of-pocket expense. And again, we didn't always used to have those programs. It really was just for people that you know, had that money to do that. You know, I don't care who you are, $30,000 is $30,000. Know, there's some people that, that do have that kind of money laying around that choose to do these financing programs because they say, shoot, this is a good rate. I'm cash flow positive on this. I'd rather keep my money you know, making interest in, a, in, in whatever, uh, whatever investments I have. And also really the sense of urgency is this is a very, a very good sweet spot for solar in New Jersey right now. So, solar prices that are uh, all time low, um, even with those, um, those tariffs that you, you might have heard of, you know, we got, we got hit a little bit, but right now the, the, the panel prices have come back down again. You're able to reach manufacturers that aren't, aren't hit by that as much. And the tax credit is going to start to go away, and the SREC program is going to start to transition out. So if you are interested in solar, now is a really good time to take advantage of the full 30% tax credit. It's still not too late to get into the SREC program and save money and go green and be one of the 110,000 people in New Jersey that have already done it. And that is all I put together, so we can keep talking about anything you want to ask. What does the system cost? Our average cost system in 2018 was $31,000, uh, but they really do range. It really, really depends. So I get asked that question all the time. We've also sold systems last year that cost $10,000. $10, we also sold systems last year residentially that cost $160,000. So it really, really depends on what your bill is. Bill and, and the size of the house. And size of the house, available room oh, space. Yeah, yeah. A three-bedroom house in this town. Again, I don't know Nick. I don't know where he lives, yeah. but something like Nick. Um, I don't know, maybe about twenty-five k. Okay. Yeah, my my system was twenty-five thousand. Oh, that was a good guess. Which was which was right on, and by using that uh, tax incentive, where normally I would have to pay thousands of dollars in taxes uh, for my income tax, I got almost six thousand dollars back. So that was right off the bat, and then the first. Three, four months I had the system in, zero electric bills. I was like, this is awesome. And then then I started getting SRECs every month, selling them for 200 something dollars a piece. Do you install your system in this year, 2019 or 2018? I, 2017. 2017? Yeah, it was, it, it was it, two, two years ago I went on. Because I we started it in the end of uh, sixteen, okay. and then when I fir finally powered on, it was two thousand seventeen. Yeah, and, and don't forget to look at that by the net cost, too, because that twenty five thousand, you know, in, in one year isn't twenty five thousand anymore. You know, it's it's gone down at that point to what sixteen thousand. Consider the net cost. You're losing me because of the, the tax, tax credit. credit. The tax credit. Yeah, yeah. The, your net cost. Thirty percent. Yeah, so then that'd be your net cost and then SRACs and savings. Yes? What's the long term? Um, so I know you're, you're saving money by um, using the solar power, but what's the long term um, lifespan of the solar panel and when the solar panel is no longer viable? Sure. Uh, what happens to it? Sure. So um, as far as the lifespan of the panel, um, most of the products that we use now have a 25 year product and performance warranty. So they'll still be a viable energy producer for at least 25 years. They degrade about a half a percent per year, right? So, you know, after 20 years, it's lost maybe 10% of its efficiency. It's still a, a powerhouse compared to the panels. When I started in 2011, the average wattage panel we sold was 200 watts. Now the average wattage we sell is like 310. So it'll be a viable energy producer for a long time. But as far as what happens to that equipment afterwards, I think that that is a um, 
you know, kind of an elephant in the room for these big manufacturers and, and what happens to this. And I also think that there's going to be probably a big market for um, recycling these materials in the future. I'm sure they that they'll have. Uh, well, they yes, they are recyclable. Yeah, but if you look it up online, there's not too many companies that are that are doing it. But I'm sure that somebody will figure out a way to to to, to do that. Um, but yeah, you got to do something. You can't just dump those things into a landfill. I mean, you figure so all, that, kinda, all that silicon's got to be worth something. Yeah, there's got to be something there, but that's kind of kind of uh, to be determined because it is still very new. You know, solar is barely 10 years old in New Jersey, so these are problems that we need to figure out now that's going to come up in 10 years. Yeah. Do you have to insure this? Like oh, that's a good question. So what you need to do is let your homeowner's insurance know that you've installed solar. Yeah, and, and, and that's going to help you out. Um, yeah, that, you know. Lightning or exactly, or exactly. Or because kind of stuff. we install, we warranty our roof penetrations for 25 years. Our panels are warranted for 20. You know, all that stuff is 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 covered. But you know, let's say that the tree from your neighbor's yard falls on your roof. Unfortunately, Panasonic Solar is not going to pick up that bill, but your but your homeowner's insurance will. How long has your company been in business? We've been in business since 2009. Yeah, so. We're one of the longest running companies in the state. Um, we're still a local company. We're still a privately held company. Um, we're a profitable company and this year is our, our best year yet. When I started with the company, there was three of us and now there's 55 employees and, and growing. Do you have solar on your home? I don't actually yet. I, uh, I bought my house last June. And what I need to do first is re-roof and take down four trees. And the co cost of re-roof was $8,000 and the cost to take out these trees was 5,000. And I chose not to go into debt to do those things. So I'd like to pay cash for those home improvement purchases first before I do. Yeah, I had to take down a tree. There was, there, there was a big tree that was- That's just how I operate though, like from a personal standpoint, I, I don't like, I don't paid off my car. I don't. I don't like that. A lot of people don't operate that way. I suppose I sub subscribe to like the the Dave Ramsey outlook on life. If you're listening to his podcast, which is just like pay down all of your debt instantly, is is my type of thing. So um, I do have a contract signed with the company, though. I just got to take care of this stuff first. Yeah. So Andrew, uh, just I want you to help me make sure I'm clear on the thirty sure. percent tax credit for this year. So system costs twenty five thousand. Sure. Yeah. So you're saying for this year, if I were to start, then I would get thirty percent. Of that twenty-five thousand or seven thousand five hundred as a tax credit. Yes. Next year's taxes. For well, for 2019's taxes when you file next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, lately, it was explained to me because I, I they're installing in my house later this spring. Okay. I, they've already done the the first couple parts of of that process. Right. And the the uh, on a ten year loan, what the way it was suggested to me is that. You assume that you're going to put that entire thirty percent right into the loan next year. You're, that 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 all goes uh, against the loan to you know to reduce the loan. And the way that I looked at it is that I looked at what's my annual JCPNL bill now. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be when I'm paying this loan? Mm -hmm. And then what? How do the S Rex mitigate that? Right. You know, and. My annual, I'll give you the numbers. My annual bill right now uh, with JCPNL is about twenty six hundred bucks. On a ten year loan, I'd be paying forty three hundred dollars to pay off that loan a year. The S Rex would be thirty five ninety five, and my net would be in my pocket would be over eighteen hundred dollars on a ten year loan. If you did it on a twenty year loan, in your pocket would be like over three thousand dollars. It sounds about right, and your and, and you know your bill from JCPNL is either zero or close to zero. Right. Well, I'm, that's assuming. I mean, that's the way to design it so that it's yeah it, it nets out right. What you would spend. Yeah. Basically, the S Rex cover any of those other out of pocket expenses for the most part. You know, as 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 far as it goes right now. Now, I would think I, I have a house that I have a southern exposure, I have two roof lines that face the south, I pull up Google Maps and it says, now you're in a lousy area. I don't have tree shading it, so... What do you what, mean, Google? It's a... Or maybe it was Zillow I pulled up. Um, and, it, and it rated... Well, I could take a look at, at your house. 
and, and, and let you know what I think. But if you don't have any trees in the area, you should be good. So what, so my, where I was going with that is, so what do you guys look at when you evaluate the potential for the roof exposure and how much sun you're going to get? Yeah, so um, we actually use a tool online for the most part now. Um, which uses um, images from Eagle View, which is even better than Google. It's like you're looking right over the house. And what it does is it creates the tree. It's recognized by the state as, uh, as accurate shading input, input. And it shows the trees and how far the shadows will cast and everything like that. We're still not able to do that from, from using the satellite, which most of the times we are. We can actually get up on the roof with a device called a SunEye. And it connects to a satellite. and it, is like a fisheye lens and it takes a picture and it can show how much shading impact you're going to have throughout time of day and time of year. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you can produce, you know, we say no to people all the time because of shading. You know, it doesn't <coughs> help us out to have somebody call us every day angry for 15 years, no. you know. <laughs> So we try to, and I guess as we get bigger as a company too, we've gotten better at, at saying no a lot, you know. I think that early on we were trying to fight for anybody that owned a roof, you know. Yeah. And, and now we have no problem saying, this isn't, you know, take care of these trees first or this and that. And then there's some people that can't even go solar at all, you know. We get this phone call all the time, oh, the solar just goes across my house all day. And you look at it and they're just socked into the woods. And, you know, even if you just took a couple trees out, you've got a whole forest behind them, mm -hmm. so... We'll take a look at that for you and make sure that you're clear. Anybody else got anything? Um, so so every once in a while, a big wind comes through, a hurricane will come through. Yeah. How, how, how well are these things attached? Well, we were in operation during Hurricane Sandy, and we had you know a few dozen houses down in Long Beach Island, and we did okay. None of the panels became uplifted. And that's because they are rated to withstand the weight of hurricane force winds. and. Let me see if I had this old presentation I was about to pull up for you guys. Yeah, I was, I was curious what the what the rating on it as far as the wind, how much wind it could handle. Yeah, it can handle a lot, um, but I'll show you actually. This is my old presentation. I had a, like a how solar is attached to your roof slide. <coughs> so it's just basically flashing material, and it's you know screwed into the rafters. And when we inspect the house, again, we have to have that architect sign that to say that it can withstand those, those hurricane force winds. And hurricane force winds with snow on them, too. So it's, it's, it's amazing how well they, they hold. So do they have to be cleaned? That's a really good question. Most customers in New, for most customers in New Jersey, that answer is no. Um, for our customers that are down the shore, and there's lots of birds, seagulls, and birds droppings, then that answer's probably yes. And who does that? So there's companies that do that. You can definitely do it yourself, too. But for people that live in Pequonic, the answer is no. You know, that solar field that we have has never been clean, ever. Um, you know, the rain does all the cleaning for us, really. Um, but there are services that do that. Where you see that a lot, where those solar services are based out of, is usually Southern California, or Arizona, will they get a lot of dust and then not a lot of rain and it'll accumulate. But um, they are maintenance free in that regard. But we had a couple customers in, um, you know, like Manilok and specifically, or Forked River. I remember this one guy who had just like seagulls everywhere. He had to clean them. Yeah. But um, in uh, Pequonic, I, you shouldn't have to worry about that. How could you clean them? I mean, what kind of uh, material? You know, so, um, yeah, I actually wrote a blog post on that pretty recently and what some people have done is they use uh, car wash car wash soap detergent and then those soft car wash brushes but if it's really bad you know you should just you don't want to kill yourself up on that roof that's our first thing I say in the blog post make sure that you're safe you know because you could slip off that roof pretty quickly but I, I would probably leave it to a service if you did that you know they say that cleaning your solar panels can bump up their efficiency by about five percent but the rain really does wash it off you know if there was a market in us for market here for us to upcharge our customers by offering a cleaning service we certainly would but there's just not much of a need for that in this area yeah as soon as it rains it cleans them cleans them right off 
You know, even if it's covered with pollen, yep. as soon as it rains, it just takes it right off. Yeah, we clean all that. We also um, yeah, yeah, you can do that. We also um, install critter guards around our solar panels um, because we had people that had squirrels get under there and build nests and stuff. So we just started doing that, you know, free of charge for all of our customers. We work with this company called um, Solar Pest Solutions, and they do this thin, very barely visible. Um, great that goes around the panels now so you can't get any intruders underneath So how much of a gap between the panel and the top of the roof? Uh, yeah, it's about three inches about three inches. Yeah. So do you have any information? I would guess that that would Reduce the heat inside the attic uh, You're right and also what it does is it allows kind of a natural convection cooling because you're gonna have hot air rises and it's gonna go underneath and kind of create this this current so yes, it will cool down your attic. Because at least it, for the area it's covering. Because right. doesn't it extend the length of your roof by like ten years? Yes, it will. But again, at least for the area that it's that it's covering, yeah. you know. So. <laughs> yeah. Paul, have you, um, Paul, have you asked your um, homeowners how much your insurance is going to go up, or have you not quite yeah, got it yet? It's, it's covered. It's not going to go up at all. You don't have yeah, to, mine didn't go up at all. Add wow. your no. Oh, so you just have to tell them it's there. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I mean it's becoming pretty mainstream, especially here in 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 New Jersey. So, um, you know the insurance companies are okay with it, and uh, yeah, you get that extra protection. So. And resale value on a house, I assume, is, assuming that it's paid for or whatever by the time you sell your house. Yeah, it's tough for me to pinpoint an exact answer because so all the studies that I've seen have been done. Um, from uh, Berkeley Labs in California, so it's tough to relate to the New Jersey market. But I think that it's safe to say that at least what you invested in the sol in the solar, you can get, you know, more, uh, you know, back on your house. It depends. I mean, I would equate it to putting a pool in the ground, to finishing a basement, things like that. It's a home improvement project. You should be able to get more money for your house that way. Um, but you know, again, I would make sure that you have a program that makes sense to anybody that wants to buy the house. Like my mother-in-law in Arizona did solar with Solar City. She said that it's going to be the greatest thing ever. We're not in Arizona, obviously. So, and then she sent me the quote, and um, it had a three percent escalator in it. And I said, this isn't going to work work for you, especially if you want to go sell the house, because it was something really stupid. Like she was paying fifteen cents for electricity, and they were going to charge her thirteen cents with a three percent escalator. So after like two years, she was going to be paying more. So just make sure you know, like you said first, obviously it's paid off. Make sure the program you pick is a program that you would want to have if you went into the new house. So, in, in essence, just to challenge you a little bit, it's not quite the same as a pool in the ground because the pool in the ground doesn't generate s rings. Yeah, right? well, I don't and think that, that's that, a challenge. I think it's a complimentary comment to the whole thing. No, but that's, but that's, you know, that's going to become part of the selling point of the house then. Absolutely. It has, it has solar. And so the new homeowner is going to benefit from the s -rec, Sure. Correct? You can. Yeah, you can give. So here's the thing, too. I've seen customers go both ways that sell the house. The s are your s -recs, whether you live in the house or not. Oh, is that right? So you can give them to the new homeowner or you can keep them to yourself. That's your prerogative. Uh, wait, yeah. Wait. Yeah. So wait, when you sell the house, yeah. you keep earning? You, you could. But you still have to go to the house and take a picture of the meter. I suppose, or you could access the monitoring portal online yeah, you, if it's you considered could, you, revenue. You could, use, you could use the yeah. uh, the monitoring tells you exactly how much. I mean, I, I, we, the buyer wants you to keep. I mean, they might not buy the house if they can't get the. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just, just saying, you know, to get super technical about it, they're they're your extracts whether you live in the house or not. But we've had um, at this point because we've been in business for ten years, we've had a bunch of people that have sold their houses and. Uh, Everybody no. gives the s oh, to the new customer, so we'll, we'll talk do, to the new right? customer. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and we get to meet a lot of new people that call in. Yeah, they they have no, the loan can be transferable over to the new homeowner. Do they have to qualify? They have to qualify, but you know, people that are buying a house, I assume, are going to be in a, a decent enough credit standing to be able to do the solar loan. The minimum FICO is 640 right now. We have one program that goes down to 600, so we're, we're signing up a lot. A lot of the credit becomes less and less of an issue. The credit requirement when I first started was 750, then it, which was like not too far after the financial collapse either, and that's tough to get you know financing. So then you're totally off the loan then at that point. Yeah, you're totally off the loan. Yeah, 
it's transferable and it happens all the time every day in new jersey people sell their house and yeah. and, and bring it over to a new homeowner and in our personal experience we haven't seen any issues when it comes to resale we've been able to talk to realtors we've been able to help homeowners uh write their listing to include you know the solar in it and things like that and uh yeah. you're not going to get that kind of help though with a lot of other companies there's a lot of great great companies out there you know i i, I think that um all my competitors are great, you know. Like I, I uh, subscribe to the Church of Elon Musk. I, I read it, just read his biography. I think that Tesla is fantastic. But the problem with Tesla is that um, they're generally going to want you to do the lease system, because they're not only just invested on making the sale of the equipment, but they want your money every month from that financing at a at a certain rate, and you're going to find a higher cost. And then furthermore, you're not going to be able to just pick up the phone and get an instant response. You know, as a solar company, we've dealt with big national companies. You know, we work with Tesla. We're a Tesla dealer. We install their um, batteries. We install, install their charging stations. We've worked for SunPower, which is a big company. You know, mm -hmm. Johnson & Johnson. We've worked with a lot of big companies that we've worked with and been partnered with. And it's just something about the, the corporate world that just, everything just takes a little bit longer, you know. You've got to, you know, make, make four emails to schedule a phone call time and things like that. And... You know, with Green Power, you just, you know, dial a 908 number and get somebody in New Jersey to talk to us anytime. Yeah. What was that um, website you said, Eagle View? Oh, yeah, Eagle View, but I don't, I don't want to misspeak on what the actual program is. Um, um, Eagle View, I believe, is what they use as their map inside of that program. Um, but we can, I'm trying to think what it was. Um, Oh, it's called Sighton. Sighton is the name of the program, yeah. And, you know, even if you're not ready to sign up until you know that for sure, we can help you with that. We'll type in your address into Sighton, and we'll have the guys downstairs run a report for you on that so you can have some peace of mind and obviously figure out if it's even worth it, you know. Um, so I know Nick put a sign in there. Um, I'll take that, and you know, if you want to sign in here too, and if you are interested in having a meeting with our company, it's totally free to do that. I have everybody's calendars on here, so I can get you on the schedule for an appointment where we would take a look at the house and then walk you through our options. What's really good about our company is that we our approach is pretty collaborative, whereas with other companies, you, our, our salespeople have control over the layout on the roof and what program you go with. Where with a lot of other companies, they say, okay, you're going on this sales call in Baquanic here, take this, and then they go, and then that's all they're showing you, and you get to the house, and that's not what it looks like, and they're stuck. So with our company, it's collaborative in that you know, we're pulling up the house in front of you. You say, oh, well, you know, I don't know if the 15-year makes too much sense. I don't think I'll be here that long. All right, let's throw the five-year right here, and you're going to get that instant feedback to really – you know, know for sure what's going on. So, um, you know, so if you do want to get a quote from us, please do sign in. I got brochures here, business cards, and um, yeah. What I didn't mention before is that I'm uh, NAPSEP certified PV technical sales. I'm one of nine people in the whole state that can actually say that they're a professional in selling solar. So you can ask me any anything you could ever imagine about solar, I could answer for you. And that's all I got. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for calling.